If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Psalm 100. Psalm 100. I've just got a 45-minute sermon today. <laughs> no, I can smell the turkey, all right? I'm not going to put, that, <laughs> put you through that. But I do want to talk about a Thanksgiving psalm, a Thanksgiving psalm. And I believe with all my heart, Psalm 100 is a Thanksgiving psalm. Let me give you the outline. We've got four points. And I'm going to put it in high gear, okay? Once I get going, y'all got to listen fast. Number one, a song of praise. You realize psalms are songs. They are songs. And folks, music is important. Words are important. Spiritual words are inspiring. That's why I still like our Baptist hymnal, because every song in the Baptist hymnal is based on Scripture. And we will do hymns as long as I am pastor and Steve is music leader here at this church. We love hymns. We love praise and worship music. But folks, psalms are so important. A song of praise, a song of comfort, a song of thanksgiving, and a song of gratitude in Psalm 100. You know, we have so much to be thankful for as God's chosen people. God created us. God loves us. God forgives us. God saves us and has prepared a perfect place called heaven for us Christians, and we will live with him forever and ever and ever. You need to have an attitude of gratitude for what God has done for us. Thanksgiving should be a time when we have a joyful heart and praise for the many blessings he bestows on us. Today we are celebrating uh, being in our new sanctuary for five years. In the first place, the five years has gone fast. Just amazing. But I just pulled out a few statistics I want to share with you. And it is only bragging on God. Okay, we could not do what we do without God. Three of the most important people in our church are God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We need them all. But in the last five years at Rye Hill Baptist Church, he has allowed us to see 304 additions to our church family. 304. The first year, we had 111 people join our church. Only a true and living God can do that. In our finances, our beginning loan balance was 3.5, a little over $3.5 million. And you have to understand, we saved up almost $2 million and had that to put down. And then we have paid, in five years, over $2.4 million on this loan. And the sweet part about it is over $2.1 million have gone directly to the principal of this loan. So we are saving thousands of dollars in interest. God has not only grown our church, folks, he's grown our people. All of our ministries are flourishing. Every one of our ministries are important. The children are important. The preschool is important. Okay, uh, the youth are important, and the adults is important. And I'm proud also of our Sunday school program. The average percentage of your worship crowd in the average Southern Baptist church is 40% of the worship crowd goes to Sunday school. I can tell you right now, 67% of people that come to our worship service attend Sunday school and have discipleship training every Sunday morning. And I want to commend you for that. Folks, I am bragging on God. It's not me. I know I've been here, you know, February will be 19 years. And, and even when I first came in, my parents helped me unload my office stuff and them old boards that you see that has the attendance on there and things. My dad looked at me and he said, son, are you sure you want to come here? And I said, Dad, what, Mayor, what you said, this is my assignment. 
this is what God created me for. And folks, I just, I love this church. I love the people. I love the Spirit of God that is in this church. So we're not bragging on ourselves today. If you're a guest today, we are bragging on our Lord Jesus Christ because only God could do those things. And to God be the glory, great things He has done. Psalm 100, a song of praise. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all ye lands. Verse 1. Now I know sometimes we have a problem with shouting. Baptists, you know, you don't want to get too excited. But I've been to, to, the, uh, the, to the hill. I've been to the football stadium. I've been to the basketball stadium. And some of you there, you go crazy there. Woo, pig! Zoe! <laughs> Folks, I'm all for sports. But we need to shout to the Lord our God. We need to shout about what is done. We need to testify of the goodness of God. We need to let people know that we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation. It's not us. I know you have to have leaders. I understand that. I know you have to have organization. I understand that. I thank God that this past Sunday night, we, we are going to have our third full-time staff member I thank God for that. But I'm telling you, it is God, and we need to shout to Fort Smith, look at what God has done in our life. Make a joyful shout unto the Lord. All ye land, serve the Lord with gladness. Man, you need to be a happy Christian. There's enough negative things going on. There's enough people that look at the glass and see it half empty. And folks, I am telling you, I don't know where I got it, but I'm one of those guys that looks at it and says, it is more than half full. Serve the Lord with glass. Come before his presence with singing. My friend, God is worthy of our worship. Look at Psalm 98. Just look across the page. You don't even have to turn the page. Psalm 98, verse 4. Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth in song and rejoice in singing. Reminds me of the song, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Sing to the Lord with harp. Sing with harp the sound of song, with trumpets, with the sound of horns. Shout joyfully before the Lord, the King. And we all know the pomp and circumstances of the days and the biblical days that we are talking about. And when a king came into town, I'm telling you, it was a procession. It was a big deal. Folks, our king is coming again. He's coming, and we're looking for him. And we need to tell people that he is coming. It is real. God is real. The rapture of the church is real. I had a man ask me this week, Brother Mike, do you really think we're going to rapture out of here? And you know what I told him? No, I don't really think it. Ah, somebody got it. I know he's coming. He is coming again, and if he'll come right after our Thanksgiving meal, we'll have a great time today. <laughs> and of course, I kid you, if he wants to come now, I'm all for that. Look at verse 7. Let the seas roar in all its fullness, and the world who dwells in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the hills be joyful together before the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth with righteousness. He shall judge the world and the peoples with equity. Do you know what it says in another place in Psalms? If we don't praise him, even the rocks will praise him. Oh, folks, he is worthy of our praise. Number two, a song of comfort. Look at verse three. No, I love that word, no. Know that the Lord, he is God. Folks, a lot of people think there's all kinds of gods out there, and there are little g's, but there's only one God. It is Jehovah God of this Bible. It is he who made us. Matter of fact, 
Psalms 139 tells us that we were uh, fearfully and wonderfully made. He has made us so that we can have fellowship with Him. He has made us where we can share our testimony and shout to others about that. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Folks, it is so important that we understand. I like what the mayor said earlier. Folks, I'm telling you, it's not about him. It's not about me. We serve a great big God, and he makes the analogy of a shepherd to a sheep. And you have to understand, as sheep, we totally depend on God. Totally. He feeds us. He moves us around. He finds water. He finds honey in the rock. He feeds us, and we can count on God. He is the God of comfort. In Psalm 23, all of our texts today are in Psalm, and I know you know this, but let's look at Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Folks, if you really think about it in America, you do not have any wants. We have shelter over our head. We have food in our bellies. We have clothes on our backs. We have things that third world countries do not have. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. And I understand the waters are not always still. I understand there's storms in life. But he is that calming force. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Folks, you need to thank God for the Holy Spirit. You need to thank God. If you will listen to the Holy Spirit, you will make the right decision every time. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Oh, listen to me, folks. He is called the helper. He is called the God of comfort. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Yes, folks, we have enemy, and and folks, people are not our enemies. The Bible tells us that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities. And Satan tries to discourage you. Satan tries to get you thinking negative. Satan works overtime. And folks, some of you, you think way too much. Just too much. You lay in bed at night thinking. Man, say your prayers and go to sleep. God is the God of comfort. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. I love this old uh, song that was sung. Uh, you know, uh, taking a sip from the cup. And, and you know, when, when that first coffee, when it first gets there, it's hot. And this is what uh, my grandfather would do. He would pour that first one into the saucer and set his cup by, and he would drink from the plate there. And you know what that's a symbol of, folks? It's a symbol of my cup runneth over. There's honey in the rock. I like these two. These are folks you need to find, folks. Who? Surely goodness and mercy. (laughs) Man, you need goodness in your life. You need goodness. You need to be good. You have the mercy of God. Will follow me all the days of my life, and I love this promise, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Folks, forever and ever and ever. So we see the song of praise. We sing a song of comfort. Let's look at a song of thanksgiving. Verse 4, enter into his gates with thanksgiving into his courts with praise. Do you not see all the praise that is going on in this particular psalm? Folks, if we would spend more time praising God, we would be better off as Christians. That peace that passes all understanding. And be thankful to him and bless his name. 
Oh, folks, God's name, Jehovah God, creator of this world. Psalm 92, Psalm 92, verse 1. It is good to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, and to declare your loving kindness in the morning. Folks, you need to start the day with God and end the day with God. You need to start the day with the Word of God in your hand and prayers on your lips. You need to end the day with God's Word in your hand and more praises on your lips. To declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night. Matter of fact, another psalm says, Ten or seven times a day, I will praise him. On an instrument of ten strings, on the lute, on the harp, with harmonious sounds. For you, Lord, have made me glad through your work. I will triumph in the works of your hands. O oh Lord, how great are your works! Your thoughts are very deep. I heard this quote not too long ago. What if you were blessed today by the only, only blessed today by only the things that you were thankful for yesterday? What if you were blessed today only by the things you were thankful for yesterday? Count your blessing. We sang that, and I was telling the mayor. Steve likes to get it upbeat. He, he don't sleep, sing slow hymns, all right? Count them one by one. See what God has done. And the last thing, the last thing, a song of gratitude. A song of gratitude. Look at verse 5. For the Lord is good. Man, he's good, folks. He is so good. His mercy is everlasting. Now, folks, it's God's mercy to save a sinner like me. We don't deserve heaven, folks. We really don't. But because God loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son to die on the cross for you and I, we can experience the mercy of God. God is so merciful, folks. He doesn't give us what we, you know, what, what we should. He doesn't, he, he gives us what we shouldn't have sometimes. You, you just think, you know, there's, there's times in our life that we really, you know, we, we really have to just depend on God for everything. It's his mercy and his grace. Everlasting. Look at the last part of that. And his truth endures for all. What is truth? A lot of people are wanting to know what truth is. You know what truth is? The Word of God. This is truth. This is what we believe. This is our instruction booklet. This is how to live. This is who we are. This is what we preach. This is what we teach. And the Word of God is everything to a growing Christian. Psalm 119. Psalm 119, verse 97. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. You, through your commandments, make me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers. Your testimonies are my meditation. I understand them more than the ancients because I keep your precepts. I have restrained my feet from every evil way that I may keep your word. And then down in verse 105, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Oh, folks, we have the light. We have the light. Matter of fact, Psalms 119 says, thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Mayor, you got me thinking, and I know I'm going off script here, and it's not on our PowerPoint. Matthew 5, and I close with this. Matthew 5, verse 14. 
Jesus' words, you are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Nor do you light a lamp and put it under a basket, but you put it on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. When we were talking about and creating this and drawings of this sanctuary, one of the things that we insisted that we were going to have was a lighthouse. Everyone that crosses our property, everyone that comes by here, and there's thousands of cars every day that goes by. We have one of the best locations for a church in the city of Fort Smith. And we need to continue to be that lighthouse for others. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Thanksgiving all year through, I close with this, not just on Thanksgiving, but every day of the year, give God your heartfelt praise and it will bring you cheer. For when we are thankful the entire year through, joy will flood our hearts spilling over in all we do. Every minute of the day, thank God for his grace. Every second you're alive, praise his holy face. Give him your thanksgiving with a heart that's fortright. And in the eyes of the Lord, you'll be a pleasure and a delight. So everyone, let's show him our gracious gratitude today and all the year through with a thankful attitude. Father, thank you. Thank you, thank you for all that you do. God, thank you for being with us and loving us. And God, I thank you that you're the God of praise and you're the God of comfort and you're the God of thanksgiving. And God, I pray if there's one here that doesn't know you, there's one here that has never truly put their faith and trust in Christ, God, I pray today would be that day. God, we love you, we thank you, we praise you. We give you this invitation. We give you this time. God, I pray that you would bless it. And God, I pray that we as your people, even these next two weeks, God, would just be looking for ways to bless people. Just bless people. God, again, I thank you for your Holy Spirit that is here. God, I pray that it would speak to our hearts and God, I pray our people would be obedient. But God, we love you and we praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen. Would you stand to your feet? If God has spoken to you in any way, would you come? We thank you for joining us this morning at Rahel Baptist Church. And may God richly bless you.